Hi, everyone. So now we're going to attempt to walk through how you construct the molecular orbitals and molecular orbital diagram of uh, boron trihydride. This is going to have a lot of subtle differences with respect to every other example we've uh, done in class up until this point. And the key thing here is we're going to teach you a few new techniques to um, bring about the uh, correct perception of what these orbitals will really look like once it's all said and done. Um, but as we did earlier, you still have to start by drawing the Lewis dot structure of the molecule. Um, and now because we're working with BH3, um, this is a relatively simple molecule. And the um, molecular shape um, through valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is trigonal planar as depicted um, as you can see right here. So the molecule is in the plane of the screen and it's effectively an equilateral triangle. And if you put the whole molecule in the XY plane, that means the, uh, the C3 axis um, that result is actually the z-axis and it's projecting um, out of the screen towards you. And in this particular case, um, all the symmetry elements lead you to assign this to the D3H character table. And that is going to be the character table we now have to use to generate the uh, symmetry adaptive linear combinations that are going to result from generating that H3 um, group orbital that we have to begin the process with. So as we have done all molecular orbital problems first, you start by assigning the point group as we already did. If you want to go back uh, to when we started discussing molecular orbital theory, this problem is exactly the same as when we did triangular H3 plus on the blackboard. And the point being is the same symmetry properties in triangular H3 plus exist for um, the BH3 as well. So when you move on through this process, we sort of know again that we have to, once we have the point group assigned, we then have to assign the geometrical disposition of the, of the structure in space which again, we are just reiterating that the C3 axis is actually the Z axis. And when I do everything in this entire presentation, all of the C3 rotations will be done in a counterclockwise manner uh, to be consistent with how we've been, how I've been teaching it to you throughout the semester. So then we have to make the reducible representations for the outer atoms. So in this case, it's the, it's the H3 group orbital is the thing we're concerned with. So in doing so, remember, we have to use the D3H point group. And the point um, that we have to now work through is we have to see the result of what happens to every one of, of these atoms in each of the operational classes that are in the point group. So that'll allow us to then make this representation. So I'm just going to show you what the answer is, and we'll work through it systematically. Um, so all atoms remain unshifted um, under the E operation. So that gives us a character of three. If you do any C3 rotation, as illustrated sort of just over here, that's going to interchange all the atoms. So that gives you a character of zero. The C2 operation, now remember, you can pick any C2 axis you want. For convenience, I'll just pick this one right here. So that's, that's the C2 axis. And there's three of those. Obviously, they're running through each of the, all, each of the boron um, hydrogen bonds. But as you can tell from this particular situation, this atom will remain fixed and the other two will interchange and that gives you the character of one. If you apply the horizontal mirror plane operation to this, remember the horizontal mirror plane is in essence the, uh, the XY plane. So all the atoms stay fixed and that gives you a character of three. 
Um, the S3 improper rotation is in essence just a C3 rotation, as you can imagine, like we would normally do. And then you'd have to reflect through um, the mirror plane that's perpendicular to that rotation, which is again the horizontal mirror plane. Um, but no matter what, the C3 rotation in itself moves all the atoms. So that character is, of course, zero. And then um, the sigma V planes are actually exactly parallel with all of the C2 rotational axes. So effectively, I can just fill this in here. One of the sigma Vs are, are sitting right there. And the same thing happens that you would see in the C2 operation. You get the interchange of those two atoms. And then again, that one would stay fixed, giving you a character of one. So when you do that full reduction and applying, again, um, tabular reduction to this problem, you will wind up with an EREP now, um, or two EREPs. One of them is A1 prime, and the other one is E prime. Now this is pertinent because this is the first time when we've done one of these problems now where, ne where we have a doubly degenerate um, EREP that got generated. And as you can see here, it's telling you it has the symmetry properties of, of, of the X and Y axes that actually is defined as transforming together. So that's going to take a little more work on our part to understand what that means and the ramifications of what that means. So those are our um, entries in the in the character table, and it's this double degeneracy that then makes this problem unique with respect to everything else we've done to this point in time.